This week's Real Life Podcast is brought to you by our friends at Rig Hand Distilleries. Good afternoon, everybody. Another episode of the Real Life Podcast coming to you from Little Brick in the heart of the River Valley. Office temperature. Not bad. Acceptable. We cracked a window open earlier. It's not too shabby. Bag milk, thoughts on temperature? Nice. 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 You know why it's so nice in here? Because we're entertaining guests. Keeping it casual. Foreign guests. I see that. Two of them. Sweden. We have to show them our best foot forward. We ordered a nice long fall and autumn period. Beautiful. Our friend Ufe Bodin is back. He is not staying in the basement of Wanye Manor this time. He is upgraded. He is staying at Crash Hotel, the center of the ice district in a gleaming Edmonton, Alberta fall. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, it's amazing to be here again. Thank you very much. Uh, so nice to have you back. Yeah, it's uh, it's my third time here now since uh, I think you guys invited me the first time was maybe February 2017. And Last year, yeah. Yeah, and I came back uh, in March, lived with you guys, and now I'm back again. So uh, I guess I might as well move here. Why did you move out of Wanya Manor? Was it the smell? Was it the standing water in the basement? Or the room we told you not to go into that has a lot of flies coming out of it? Uh, yeah, it was that corpse. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Allegedly, that well, was a corpse. Guess, yeah. You never went in the room because you would have broken no, I, the lock. I just felt the smell and yeah, that's okay. made my own assumptions. I think, right. I think Ufe uh, hanging out with him now so many times in Edmonton, walking around town with him. I think he knows more people than I do here. He's a local celebrity. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you brought... Your how do, co-worker, boss, how do you guys describe how this works down? I don't know yeah, how it works. friend, boss. There um, are no bosses in Sweden, just co-workers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no hierarchies. <laughs> Peter Siebener is here as well. How are you doing, Peter? I'm doing great. Good, Good to be here. It's Welcome an honor. little brick. It's an honor to have you, legitimately. There's a very small community of hockey people who like the internet around the world, and like 90% of them are in this room right now. Yeah. Cheers. Well, we decided that we're all cool, right? That's right. That's yeah. Right. Amongst ourselves. <laughs> yeah. 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 Despite what everybody else says. Now, just before we get started about your trip, I'm livid because when we left you last, Ufe, you said, I'm going to come back here with 24 suites. And I said, the first question that popped into my mind, which was the only thing that matters is, will there be Swedish women? And you talked a big game. Oh, there'll be Swedish women? For sure, Wanye. Most will be women. There are no women. And you brought a child who is also not a woman. <laughs> is that true? That is very much the truth, yeah. So we have enough women in Edmonton. We don't need to bring tall Swedish guys into yeah. our very shallow dating pool with no additional Swedish women coming with them and make our situation worse for ourselves. This is not what we were intending to do. I'm telling no. you, as someone who has to uh, hang out with this gaggle of Swedes, parliament of Swedes, whatever yeah. the, the terminology is, it's, uh, it's quite annoying. Because we're walking around yeah. and it's all eyes on them. Oh, this! Oh God, that group of Swedes are with. They're so good looking. Oh, this! And I'm like, <laughs> I'm walking around. And I already have a very delicate self esteem to begin with. For sure, you're <laughs> very you low just, confidence. Oh yeah, and I'm just shattered at the moment. Yeah. I can't even be out in public. Unbelievable. And when UJ went to Sweden to visit with these guys from Elite Prospects, I should mention they're here from Elite Prospects, one of the partners of the Nation Network. Did you, were you introduced to gaggles of Swedish women? I saw a lot of Swedish women, but they weren't looking at me. I'll yeah. tell you that much. And they were beautiful and tall. Were you wearing Swedish. that Canadian flag cape you had made? I was trying to, I was trying to be on blast. I'm not an American. I am a Canadian. Come talk to me. Nothing. Nothing. But then I went with Ufe and everyone wants to talk to Ufe and it's like, it don't even exist. Even in Sweden. Yeah. He plays me in Edmonton and on the road. Well, I don't think I quite realized when we were roommates, how popular you guys are in Europe. Cause now that I'm fully Instagram BFFs and whatnot, like it's impressive. You're there. The, the the Oilers are in Sweden. You're hanging out with Hunter, the yeah, mascot, yeah. our greatest export. How was he? Uh, he was not very talkative. No. Did but, he smell funny? Because uh, I know he smells funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did. It's actually, not his but, fault. But he, he had a nice uh, eight pack on yeah. his belly, like really hard and soft. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, so, I know yeah. what you mean. <laughs> he, he hugged me and he was quite, um, yeah, he was quite. Uh, We've been talking on Hunter's Instagram. <laughs> Jay yeah. and Bag Milk and I for a year. Not even a like. Not even a like. I once had George LaRock like a tweet of mine. It's the highlight of my existence. Hunter is on a different level. He does not care. But and then you're interviewing him like Walter Cronkite. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> yeah. So uh, like uh, after the game in Gothenburg, a game that shall not be named right then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Ufe, if we don't talk about losses around here, we only get to talk about like eight no, games a year. I know. I know. But 
they were so bad in that game. Yeah, yes, of course. They didn't show up. But anyway. Uh, uh, unbiased so, journalists with I know. honest yeah, opinions. So, Damn yeah. you. We don't do well with that around here. But anyway, I'd done the, the interviews with the with the guys and I was heading back and I, I, I stood and talked to someone and this stranger approaches me. He's like, hey, good seeing you again. I was like, yeah, but who are you? I'm Hunter. <gasps> and this the guy, real man. This guy in his, I don't know, 35, 40s comes up to me and, you know, the magic just disappeared. So uh, I'm not a Hunter fan anymore. I didn't think there was an actual human in that I costume. thought he was legitimately a large lynx who learned to walk. They yeah, put like a exactly. big cage in the river valley and yeah. trapped him. That's what I was led to believe. Mm. What do you think about Gritty? Speaking of mascots. I love him. Amazing. I love chaos. Do you think <laughs> that... Yeah, you love metal. Exactly. Yeah, Ufe's hard AF. And Gritty's chaos. Well, yeah, hard AF chaos. is... I heard that when Philadelphia was rolling out Gritty, they had a few different prototypes of the mascot head and they set the one down with the googly eyes and it wiggled and everybody in the room laughed <laughs> legitimately. And they were like, you know what? Let's go with the googly eyed one. You know what? You should talk to the Flyers fan next to me. Thoughts about Gritty, Peter? Yeah, well, I, I, the funniest thing about it is that it, he looks exactly like Jacob Voracek. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uncanny. <laughs> Like their, their best playmaker is now also going to be their mascot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I lived in Philly for, for a year, about oh, nice. 12 years ago. And uh, well, it's a scary place. Like, like you can get beat up for, for saying the wrong stuff to people over there. So they got to have a scary mascot. In the games or like in the streets? Well, you anywhere. Really? Yeah. When you're in Philly, you're a Philly fan. Yeah. Yeah. You're really? a Philly fan. And, and you know, uh, this is uh, that's that's one of those places where it's not like if you're a foreigner, you're not cool. Like it's not cool to be a, a, a foreigner in Philly, because if you're not from Philly, you're going to be you're going to have to prove yourself. It's the best place on Earth once you've proved yourself and once you get once you get the grip of Philly, it's a great place, but I'm telling you, it's, um, it's, um, those people are proud and they're going to have a mascot that is, well, they need a scary mascot. They still got, I mean, they won two Stanley cups 43 years ago, um, based on violence and scaring people to death. So it all makes sense. I love gritty Rocky. Yeah. Well, yeah. Their well, most famous exports of fighter. Yeah. Fake that's- fighter. The one thing I loved about Gritty, actually, I don't know if anyone saw the video. So during the intermission, they're playing that game where people are in the bubble costumes. Gritty's on skates going around and checking all of them. Yeah. I just love like they're all in on it. Oh, yeah. It's 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 genius. Yeah. The only thing be better if he was like hitting people with like some kind of weapon. (laughs) Like a like a like a tire iron, like something like Gritty, you know? Yeah. Something hard. Yeah, Yeah. Bike chain. I think that Philly gets it. I don't think it's a mistake. Like the only criticism we have of Hunter, I didn't really understand Hunter, right? I mean, I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. I do care, but I don't care. But I took my three-year-old nephew to the game for the season opener, a preseason opener. And this kid loves hockey, bless his heart. But he's just like, where's the cat? And I'm like, well, there's like $68 million worth of Oilers skating around. He's like, uh-huh. Where's the cat? I'm like, I don't know. But Connor's about to, uh-huh. Hunter is a bigger deal than Connor McDavid is to the kid. I wonder if Philly understood that they're trolling a lot of people with Gritty and they got him, you know, into the uh, onto Fallon, Jimmy Fallon and lots of late night shows or if it just sort of took off on its own. Right. Because yeah. they have like the Kim Kardashian photo with Gritty pouring the champagne. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. It was premeditated. You had they to get think, it because they did all that. They, they would have had all that stuff in the can. Yeah. Because yeah. once Gritty came out and everyone thought he was crazy, it was like bang, 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 bang. Like yeah. they had it all lined up. Hunter's eyes are scary. His abs are scary because he's setting the bar high for the rest of us, but well, his eyes are scary. Once again, it's like hanging out with a pack of Swedes. You get envious and yeah. shatters your self-esteem. So you think Hunter's self-esteem has been shattered by Gritty? No, mine is shattered. Oh, yours. Yeah. You'll be fine. God. You always bounce back. You'll be on the news how did, four how times next find week. the eighth, the fourth row of abs? Wow. Well, that's where it's you, amazing. You got to earn those. those a lot are of really, you get the fourth row in the kitchen, they say. <laughs> the lower bottom three are in the gym and the top two are in the kitchen. Gotcha. Bag milk? A lot of watching 300, I've heard. Gerard Butler, shredded. Shredded. Oh, God, they were all jacked in that movie. Yep. Didn't they do the real 300 workout? Probably. Yeah. I assume Spartan. Hunter does the same thing. I assume. Well, now that there's a rumor he's got a man inside him. Yeah, <laughs> I don't buy it. <laughs> he's eating humans. Yeah. Show me the receipts. He <laughs> said he was Hunter. Mm-hmm. That's actually a good bit to run on people what? is to claim you're the mascot. So so uh, um, just a question. No one has actually met the guy who's inside the costume. Like Ufa was the first man on earth to actually yes. meet him. Yes. He's a big deal. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. No. For the 2019 Global Series, Ufe Boudin will now deflower <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> who is inside the Santa Claus costume? Yeah. Who else is fake? Well, it's Hunter inside Santa, of course. 
Does everybody have a mascot these days? What, what percentage of the teams are running a mascot, if you were to guess? 75%. They have Harvey the Hound down I think you kind of have to, though, don't you? That loser. It's fun. Some, yeah, it's a little bit of fun. Who wouldn't have a mascot, Dan? You know everything. Is there a Tampa Bay bolt of lightning walking around? The Rangers don't? Of no. Of course, those idiots. Islander? A, a dragon. dragon. Why not a Highlander? Oh, yeah. Like a or longshoreman. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. longshoreman, the guy from the, the old jerseys. Yeah. Mr. Highlander, fish stick guy. Or, or the guy from Scream. Yeah, get him walking around. Like a yeah. surly union representative. Exactly. <laughs> well, what was the movie? I'm Tony. The, the get away guy. from the dock. I know what you did last I summer. Know she, oh, yeah, I know yeah, what you yeah. did last summer. Yeah. Sorry, not Scream. There you go. Jennifer Love Hewitt was a childhood crush of mine. She could be a mascot. I'd enjoy that. Yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Who could, maybe she could be in charge of, of the Rangers. Do you think with Gritty, they went for a gacked out Grimace? You know, from McDonald's? What does gacked out mean? Well, Grimace uh, was purple. Yeah, I know, but like, I just feel like Gritty is Grimace, but he's had some hard times. Oh, like he, oh. you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Could he, be. He's, he's a like mix, a cousin or he's something. He's a mixture of of Oscar the Grouch and also Animal dog. from Muppets oh, or animal. something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to and Jacob Vorchek. If those three had a baby, <laughs> three things had a baby. Three things had a baby. My basic knowledge of biology <laughs> says that's impossible. Well, things when you're dealing with Philly. puppets, you need multiple. That's partners. true. They mate differently. That exactly. So you boys are in here visiting Edmonton. You came in 24 Swedes, no women. We'll get to that again later. We'll never stop getting to that. How do the Swedish people like Edmonton? This is extremely important. We love Edmonton so much. When there's a nice day and there's like a concert like today, I'm like, oh, Foo Fighters are in town and it's sunny. Dave Grohl will be so happy. He does give a shit. What did actual visitors to Edmonton think? What are they thinking? So obviously I've fallen in love with this city since I've been here and I came back two times yeah. actually so uh i was really hoping i could show them the the good side of, of the city and uh jay and dan has been very helpful with this so obviously uh, it's been a blast and they're all really happy and especially our our youngest guest here he uh he turned eight yesterday and uh they got him a, a special gift so and so what's it can we say his first name first yeah. names don't like Axel. a kid's kid Axel. Yeah, and just like a Axel boss Foley? name. Yep. Axel oh, is a that boss, is name. boss name. Wow. But, and his last name is, if you translate it, it's Steelhammer. So Axel Steelhammer. Oh, my oh, God. Hell yeah. Oh, great. This so kid. another guy is going to come here, you know, meet a bunch of girls who are currently eight. And <laughs> 10 years from now, when all the Edmonton eight-year-old boys are like, I'm sorry, I don't like you. Axel Steelhammer is coming back in the summer. <laughs> but he's going to play with the Oilers. He's already decided. Oh, that, has so, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's a huge Conor McDavid fan. Good Unsurprising. Man. So am I. But like from Sweden. Oh, well, I guess that's impressive. So Axel Steelhammer has just taken over my favorite name in sport, which is Steel Sidebottom. But he isn't even in sport. But yeah, well, with a name like that, there's no choice. It's true. He's in the 2026 20, draft or whatever yeah. it is. Some kids have names that are going to make and, them succeed. And young Axel walks around with confidence. He is not oh, afraid yeah. to talk to anyone. No. He can't speak English, though. No. I went and patted him. I, when I first met him, he's wearing another hat. And I yeah. pat him like, nice hat. And he just kind of like... Looked at me like all funny, but like had the confidence to do that. It's probably because in Europe, away. weird adults don't go around touching little kids on their heads. Jay, <laughs> oh. how do you? Like, I wonder what that weirded them out about. Well, I'd already, you know, we already had a lunch together, kind of That's indirectly. True. And I talked to his dad. I said hello to his dad. I thought that was good enough. Does dad speak English? Yep. Okay, then yep. you're fine. Yep. yep. You're fine. So you, you went to the game. You went to the game against Nashville. Yeah. Where'd you guys sit? <laughs> Uh, 200 level, really good seat. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we had a we had a really nice view, and I, I'm used to sitting in a press box as a journalist. So for me, it's it's not a completely new experience, but it's kind of cool to sit among fans and just mm -hmm. get you get a completely different vibe. Is there a sticker shock on the price of stuff here for the average Swedish person? Or is it cheaper? Is it more expensive? Is it like the thirty-seven dollar beers to you guys are nothing? Well, no, actually, this is this is the only country in the world with a shittier currency than ours right now. So it's great. <laughs> perfect, perfect, yeah. perfect. Uh, we're on sale to the world. Yeah. So people. So what is a beer right now? What is it? Twelve twenty-five. Twelve twenty-five. Which is, which is a bargain. You guys ever been to Toronto? Yes, yeah. unfortunately. I think they're like eighteen seventy five or something like that. Oh, or at least like seventeen. It's um, what's a beer at a Swedish elite game? How much does it cost? Uh, well, they don't actually sell them because they're not allowed because of our very strict uh, alcohol laws. What? But you can drink in intermissions, though. Uh, yeah, we can. We got fifteen minutes to run down, stand in line, maybe or maybe not get served, and uh, chug a beer and get back to well, well, it's it's impossible, really. It, it, you know what? And I recall that because we went for, uh, so Peter took and, and Ufe took me to a game in Stockholm, your garden, now my favorite team. 
Uh, and yeah, I remember we went out and for dinner and had a few drinks and yeah, we kept struggling to try to get beers in the intermissions, which is also what amazes me is that the atmosphere there is so electric and everyone's jumping up and down and going crazy and no one's drinking. Yeah. Well, you're not allowed to drink in the seats. Uh, yeah. like you can't bring a beer to your seat. Um, but they do, they do gear up pretty well. Like is that because of the opioid early. epidemic? epidemic <laughs> yeah yeah most likely, everyone's most on likely. pills jay that's yeah. what it is oh. yeah. Yeah, they're all on pills in sweden <laughs> uppers downers lefters writers we haven't we haven't legalized marijuana in sweden yet it's just us in ecuador yeah and certain parts of compton oh no i know it's us in uruguay is it uruguay it's uruguay it's ecuador no it's uruguay oh, i forgot <laughs> i counted the weed let's take a break we'll be back real life podcast after this have you got holes to dig earth to pack and roads to build then you need to call Java machinery group does your equipment need a service? Yeah, can't fix stupid, but here at Japa Machinery Group, we can fix everything else. With a full range of parts to keep your equipment running smoothly, Japa Machinery Group is a family-operated and Alberta-grown business. Here to help build a bigger and better Western Canada. Give us a call or visit us at japamachinery.com. Japa Machinery Group, join the family. We're back, Real Life Podcast, brought to you by our good friends at Japa. Jay, have you had any need for heavy-duty industrial equipment in the last 48 hours? Japa will hook you up. I'm currently quarreling with my neighbors. I wouldn't mind knocking down their house. Maybe building a moat. Yeah. Wait yeah, a minute. exactly. Keep them at bay. Are your neighbors my neighbors? Yes. What's wrong with their neighbors? Well, it's just it's a long-standing beef. It'd oh, be those nice. guys. Yeah. It would be yeah. nice to mow down their house. We have an Oilers Nation branded hot tub because we thought that would help <laughs> us bring Swedish girls over. <laughs> it didn't. Only angry neighbors. Angry neighbors who took us to court. Over this hot tub. We've actually been to court over a hot tub, which makes a level three pimp. If you're going to court over your hot tub, right? That's like how you get into the third level of pimpdom. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So getting back to it, boys, you went you went to the game against Nashville. Yes, sir. And then you went to an Oil Kings game. Yeah. So uh, the appetite for hockey in this uh, group of Swedes is uh, pretty big. So uh, just when we uh, arranged this trip, uh, I just made sure that if the Oil Kings had a home game while we were here, that we would present an opportunity for the guys to to see that as well and i think everyone pretty much everyone went along right oh yeah yeah there's like 22 of us so we're like well yeah everyone yeah more or less yeah so uh we went to see uh the oil clean oil kings played the kootenai ice last night cool or, yeah is that the first junior game you guys have been to Actually, I was uh, when I was here the first time. I went to a uh, Oil Kings game against the Hitman, so it's much safe. against a Hitman. Yeah, oh, interesting. The Oil Kings. It's an interesting. Uh, we didn't have a WHL team here for a long time, and so Edmonton was team free. And then they they got the Oil Kings, and they've done a good job resurrecting. That was the original name of the team. They'd won some championships back in the fifties and sixties and stuff like that. So we put their banners up to the roof the minute they joined. Like we still get to take credit for those. Uh, but it's a good time going to an old Kings game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, More kids. Yeah, exactly. It, it, you could tell it's it's for the kids, basically. And I think they they did a smart thing, you know, you know just promoting their their product that way too. Uh, and you can see probably families that don't have enough money to go to to Oilers games, which are breathtakingly expensive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's good for them to have an opportunity to to see good hockey. And I think. Uh, Compared to the game we saw against Nashville the other night, I think uh, the Oil Kings game was a bit more entertaining. It was like, uh, well, they at least scored a goal, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good start, right? <laughs> no, but I think uh, Peter and I was talking about this. Like the whole production is was really professional. I think the Oil Kings actually do a lot better job of making it more entertaining in the arena for everybody that's there, yeah. aside from the actual game itself. Yeah, well, I mean, coming here from Sweden, uh, major junior hockey in Canada is just something else. I mean, in terms of in terms of pure hockey quality, I'd say the Swedish junior league is pretty, probably pretty similar. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, at a Swedish uh, junior league game, there's going to be sixty people, probably like half of them parents and a bunch of girlfriends, and and you know, the staff working the game, pretty much caretakers, and you know, the guy driving the samboni, and that's going to be it. Yeah. Here you got like three thousand. We were in Oshawa a few years ago. There were like six thousand people there, packed house. Um, I totally understand the Swedish guys that may be aren't good enough to play in the top league in Sweden and they decide to go here and play junior hockey instead. Cause you know, this is way more fun. Yeah. Like you got total in arena production, thousands of people in the stands. It's just a great uh, atmosphere. You're doing media before the game and after the game, you got like newspaper reporters there. So it's, it's, um, 
it's going to prepare you for for life as a pro. So I think you guys should be really proud of your uh, major junior hockey over here. Wow. That's high praise. Some of the other WHL teams are in secondary markets, right? Like I would argue if you wanted to go to see a fun dub game, you go to a smaller town like Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, which is the most Canadian named city you'll ever hear in your life. Moose Jaw. Yeah. Um, what's the capacity of the arena in the jaw? 5,000. Yeah. And amazing because it's the only game in town. Right. And you've got the hockey mad community and they generally uh, yeah. speaking, most WHL, OHL teams rally around their cities very well. Right. And you've got smaller markets where it's all they got. And there are some drunk people making some noise in those games. It's oh, yeah. a good time. Like if I was like, yeah, if I was a Swedish player coming to play junior, like in any of the leagues, I'd pick all the small towns. Cause yeah, it's, if you want to be the, the star of the show and pick up more girls, damn it. Yeah. Well, well speaking <laughs> about, you know, Swedish guys and Swedish girls and stuff like that. Oh, so there are Swedish women. Uh, yeah. You just are. didn't bring any. No, 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 <laughs> Thank no, 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 no. We, um, we, uh, we handle them with care. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I mean, if you're 18 years old and you go play major junior hockey in Canada, you're a rock star. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, I wish I was 18 and a good hockey player and playing in Canada. Yeah. It's a lot of wishes. Yeah. We'll grant you two. Well, we got Axel, that eight year old. Yeah. We're, we're all the guys here are coaching him now. Like Axel, when you're 18, you can come here and play junior hockey. You're going to be a rock star. How would that be? Yeah. That sounds Jeez. all right to me. I'm eight. He says, right? Yeah. Yeah. Eight year olds. Unbelievable. I actually told him that yesterday that like when you're 18, you can come here and play junior hockey. And was like, when I'm 18, I want to play in the NHL. So, <laughs> so, so okay. he wouldn't have any of so that. He's going straight to the, to the draft floor. He'll have to go first round. Atta boy. What are your thoughts on uh, of the Swedish Oilers? How, how are we liking everybody this year? Clefbaum, he just was injured for a game, wasn't he? Didn't no, he, he's been playing all he season. He had a pin? No, he's played the whole season. So Clefbaum's a whole season. He's seemingly having a good start to the year. Better, yeah. Larson he's too. Hurt. And Larson. Larson too. Larson looks good. Yeah, I covered the World Championships in in Copenhagen this uh, this spring after the Oilers. Sadly, mm, we uh, call those our playoffs. Yeah, yeah. that's our Stanley <laughs> exactly. Cup. The World that, that's a funny thing. Yeah. Like uh, we uh, got to know Tom Gasola through. Uh, he he always showed up uh, when he worked for the Oilers. He always showed up to the World Championships because that time of the year the Oilers never played Full any of Oilers. So yep. yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, anyway, uh, about the World Championships, Adam Larson was amazing he was the best defenseman on the swedish team that had oliver ekman larsen young klingberg uh what else did he have like uh nhl talent twice yeah matthias ekholm they had like a stacked team of really good top class defensemen and adam larsen was the best one in the whole tournament so it's just i think it's yeah i think it's just um the way he uh, he's being utilized in the nhl it's like they see him as you know the stay-at-home defenseman that doesn't get a lot of creativity or room for creativity. Um, so I think that's kind of sad because I Whereas know in the world to championships, he was being a lot more creative offensively. Yeah. For God's so, sakes, what are we doing? That's so important well, with our last place power play that we're like, no, 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 Larson, stay home and be conservative. Well, I, I, it's, it's, it's the yin and yang for Clef Baum and Larson. One needs to yeah. stay at home. One needs to be the offensive, but to talk about Larson when he was drafted, like, so like as a prospect junior player, in Sweden, like, because going into that draft year, I like Larson was being touted as being like potentially a number one. Yeah. That's so true. how was he as a junior player? Yeah, it was. I mean, obviously, more of a like right now. I would, in NHL terms, I call him a, like more up on the defensive side, obviously. But as a junior player pl- coming up in Sweden, he actually set a, a points record for most points by an under eighteen uh, player in the SHL. A uh, record that's now been beaten by a certain Rasmus Dahlin, but oh. uh, still, that says something like that he had all this potential offensively as well. But for some reason, well, he played with the Devils for Christ's sake. Yeah, I know. yeah. <laughs> that probably took a lot of like sucked the life out of him. Yeah, and then much. we sent him here. Lamirel, or, I mean, so it's in there. There's an offensive defenseman in there, just like a guy's inside hunter. <laughs> <laughs> just peels the skin open. He's Free like, Hello. Adam. Yeah, yeah. We got. Yeah, let it, let it fly, buddy. Let's put him on the second unit PP. Well, I mean, that pass he did to Yamamoto the other day. It was a bomb. I thought it was Bouchard. I was uh, talking to the Swedes about it and trying to convert feet to, to metric. I mm. told him it was a 100-meter pass that he must have made. Hell of a pass. Given longer the than the rink. That, yeah, longer than the rink. <laughs> <laughs> and you're supposed to have smaller rinks than we have. I know. Yeah. I just like, oh, yeah, I've got this. It was like a 100-foot pass at one-to-one. Yeah, 100 meters. There we go. 
It was uh, end to end. End to end and then back around again. Yes. We use such a weird hodgepodge of measurements here in Canada, right? Because yeah. of our affiliation with American culture, right? So I would measure myself in height and f- in feet and inches. But and all my roads are in kilometers. Weight is in pounds. If you ask yeah. me how many kilograms I am, I don't know, two, four. I have no idea. Yeah. But we do we f- golf and sports. It's all feet and inches. Feet and inches, yeah. And that's because it's it, we have our U.S. overlords yeah. trying to squash what our queen wants us to measure in. Those bastards. Yeah. But metric, for the record, I'm going to go on the record. Metric is a much better and easier and actually like has like a fact behind it. Yeah. Unit of measurement. Like, like, like what the hell is a mile? How many inches in a gallon? Like what makes up a mile? You know, a quarter mile? Okay. Like that doesn't make any sense. Right? Like what's, what is the breakdown? How many <laughs> blanks in a mile? And don't get Jay started on Celsius or Fahrenheit either. Oh my. Well, Lord. that's even a, a darker art. <laughs> How does, how does the unit of <laughs> when it's hot, all of a sudden, like the separation of one degree increases. Celsius to mm-hmm. Fahrenheit increases, but then when it goes to zero, we somehow meet at minus 30? What kind of hodgepodge witchcraft? And isn't is it this? like the states in like Burkina Faso or the two countries that use it? Well, here's the other thing. In in the UK, they use miles. Yeah. They use miles. That's like the road the weird, signs? They use miles. But they also measure things in stones. Yeah. That's a, that's that's even that's even crazier. And you're like, what's a stone? They're like, no, there's an actual stone, like a Buckingham Palace, and that's how we built our measurement system around this. Yeah, planet. well, I think there is an actual stone that one set the standard for for a stone, and I think is like eight and a half kilograms. So it would be like nineteen pounds, I think. I'm not really sure. Nineteen oh, I'm seven point. stone, I am. Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. One oh. stone is fourteen pounds, one yeah. Ah, uh, of course. That is gibberish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, See, there's no point in having a discussion anymore. You can just Google anything and oh, that'll yeah. be the end of it. No, it's Without Google, I'm lost in all situations. <laughs> lost in the sauce. <laughs> so after this, we're going to go to what games? Where are you guys, boys? I hit it after this in Edmonton. Got two more games for these guys, right? Yep. We're going to see Pittsburgh and we're going to see the Capitals. Picked a good week to come. Very oh, good yeah. week. Oh, yeah. The who's who of the NHL came through to, well... We'll see if we win or lose. We'll probably win a couple. Connor versus we'll the Stars. I think, you know, so as as anyone who has any type of social media account will know that the others had their Halloween party last night. Mm-hmm. These are always great opportunities to bring the team together. Yes. Uh, you know, they they haven't been playing that bad, except for they just they just couldn't show up offensively against Nashville. Which Nashville, they played the well. They just they defended well. They defended, Saros. They defended well and yeah, exactly. Saros. But they kept, but also like they kept shooting it at them. I, I don't know, like the, it, it, we just didn't create any good quality chances. But I think you know what, three and three, you know they're gonna go have this party, get together, get fired up. Sid's gonna come to town, thinking he's gonna kick our ass. Connor's gonna want to show him up. Connor always gets fired up to play Sid. Like I remember last year, even though we sucked, that game against Pittsburgh was unreal. Yeah. So I expect tomorrow to be a really, really good game. What What about last year's Halloween party, Jay? Did that bring the team together? Wink. Yeah, so hopefully this Wink. this year's Halloween par- party had the opposite effect of last year's because last year's you could definitively <laughs> draw a, a chart on a map what it did because of whatever happened between two potential teammates. The best, allegedly, uh, in your no, opinion. Yeah, allegedly, the best no in secret my secret of the Oilers the last five years was the 2017 Halloween party. Yeah, yeah. I think it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. Everything went to shit. Yeah, so but, don't say it always brings people together. No, I, I, said, I, said, I said it's a chance to bring the team together. Sure, chat, but it could go the other way. You know, they should have the Halloween parties of the pint. We keep an eye on everything. We wouldn't let anything happen. We exactly. wouldn't even let them talk to each other. <laughs> we, there'd be, every 15 feet, there'd be an Oilers surrounded by a full circle of Oilers fans chanting at them. Yeah, exactly. There wouldn't be Just a chance for yeah. yeah. Let's take another break. Real life podcast after this. Sumojerky.com. You've been through the gas station. You've seen all the flavors. Teriyaki, black pepper, Maybe extra hot, sweet chili. That's about as exotic as it gets. But if you subscribe to Sumo Jerky at sumojerky.com, check them out online, enter your preferences. They source out the finest small batch handcrafted ma and pa jerky from all over the world. They have all your favorite flavors, but it's high quality handcrafted versions of your favorite flavors, and they get exotic as well. Exotic jerky from exotic animals, or play it straight and stick with beef. Enter your preferences at sumojerky.com. It shows up once a month. Deliver it as a gift if you like. Have it sent to your work for a little pick me up during the day. Sumojerky.com. Follow them on Instagram at sumojerky for pictures of their meat. 
or sign up for the service yourself, sumojerky.com. Once a month, meat delivered right to your door. It's the home delivery service you didn't realize you need until it started showing up. My favorite day of the month is Sumo Jerky Delivery Day. Sumojerky.com to get started. We're back. Real Life Podcast. Sumojerky.com. Fake title sponsor. Amazing. If, as your beef jerky needs go bag milk, I highly suggest some Sumo Jerky. I'm waiting. What are you waiting? It already came this month. I know. Now I have to wait. Until next month. It's rude. You can't have Sumo Jerky every day. Need, bag milk could be made of salt. I need twice a month. For real? Yeah, I think so. Interesting. Yeah. I'll work on I that. I could do twice a month. See? Really? There's always time for beef jerky. Always. It's a beef jerky subscription box company that we own slash advertise of our own. And it's delicious, boys. I highly suggest you get it for all your fellow Swede men, because there are no women over in Sweden who would not require any beef jerky, clearly. Bag milk? We have two Swedes here. Mm-hmm. They know hockey. Yes. The Oilers have a prospect over in Sweden right now, Joel Pearson. And I'm hoping you guys can... Tell us a little bit about him. Should we be excited? I'm excited. I'm looking at his numbers. He seems to be an offensive guy. He seems to have a great shot from the highlights that I've seen. I've never seen him play. I'm hoping you guys can maybe shed a little bit of light on what the Oilers have in Yule Pearson. Well, yeah, for sure. Um, well, um, he was a surprise to everyone last year because he, two years ago, he played third division hockey in Sweden, which is very rare to do at age 22. And then um, it's... Um, um, it, it comes around once every 10 years for someone to actually take the leap from third division to be in a, a dominant player in the SHL. And, and he did. Uh, obviously, he played a lot with a certain Elias Pettersson, which probably helped him get a, a few points. Mm. But he impressed everyone. He, he is a, a really good skater, very confident with a puck. He can hold on to the puck. He's got really good stick handling. And he's really, really good at getting pucks through the net. He has a good shot. Uh, he doesn't have to take a slapper. He can. Um, he got a lot of assists last year just getting pucks through to the net. And uh, in today's hockey, that's um, that's a, um, a key component in a successful offensive D-man. So I actually, I, I watched him a lot. He plays in my hometown. So uh, I must have seen him play 45 games last year. And um, I think the Oilers did a really smart move there. They signed him but decided to keep him in Sweden for a year. So essentially no one else could get him because potentially he could be a, a pretty solid NHL defenseman. Um, he hasn't been as successful this year getting points. Vekra has been struggling as a team uh, to score goals, um, but he's been one of their best players. He um, A lot of things revolve around him on the power play. He can carry the puck from his own end zone. He's a really good skater. And um, so, I mean, he's, he's going to have another strong, year i think do you think that he's the kind of guy that could play for the oilers maybe as soon as next year or more maybe come into the ahl learn the pro game at that level and then try to work his way up well um i mean the way his career has progressed he would be open to anything i mean just getting into the shl was a big step for him he had been working as uh as an assistant at a school at age 22 and all of a sudden he became a pro so just being a hockey pro for him is 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 a big thing. So he'd be open to play uh, a season or two in the AHL. Uh, I think that could be a good idea. It would probably be a good idea to give him 30 or 40 games in the AHL and, and test him out. But, well, it depends on the Oilers' uh, situation uh, as far as D-men goes next year. But um, Oh, we're uh, solid on the D. Oh, rock solid. Yeah, rock <laughs> solid points. <laughs> we got, yeah. Kings of the D. Um, I think he could potentially have a really strong camp for the Oilers next year. And if he does, um, we've seen it in Toronto with guys like Andreas Borgman and Keller Rosen actually making the the team on opening night there last year. So um, I think the old person could could do that as well. I don't know if Ufa agrees with me, but. Uh, the thing that worries me is like since he played at such a low level before he couldn't commit himself to you know the physical training that that is required to be like a real pro so he's he's still kind of left behind in that way but but i think like he's he's getting there so i think he's probably gonna play in the ahl for at least half a season and if he shows that he can play at the same level um high level there i think he he would be a prime candidate to get called up but we're still way ahead of ourselves here so yeah for sure and ufe last time you were here we asked you about the oilers had just got pontus aberg the yeah. last time you were here <laughs> exactly why can't this guy stick 
Yeah. The Oilers put him down on waivers. Ducks picked him up. He only played in one game and then back down on waivers again to the AHL. What? He's got the skill. He's fast. Yeah, he played on He's the first line hands. with Getzlaff and Raquel last night. So what's going on with him? Yeah, it's inconsistency. He's got, I think it was uh, Todd McClellan who put it best. Like he has all the tools, the, the tools to play in the NHL and actually be a top six winger. But for some reason, he's not consistent enough. He takes nights off where he's where he's nowhere to be seen. So I think that's that's been his struggle his whole career, even when he was a junior player and he got cut from the national junior team and before the world junior. So that's been like a, a recurring theme his whole career, sadly. Another one, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up. Another one of our sites in the in the network, Leafs Nation, obviously they have Nylander, who is still waiting for a contract. Now the balls on this GM. The, the balls 31 on this year guy. old balls on this GM to make Nylander sit. Well, he's asking for big smoke. Hey, he? hey, hey. He I wants dry saddle money. He wants dry saddle money. That's great. The balls on this brand new GM to let him sit. This kid, I respect him. How do you guys look at a guy like Nylander where he's sitting out arguably some important games with the Leafs while he's trying to get some big dollars? Yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, it's it's been a big topic for discussion in Sweden, actually, because everyone is like, come on, accept whatever money they're giving you. We're, Sweden is a country where, where we don't like to talk about money at all. It's like you're getting paid so much money to play in the NHL. Just take whatever they give you and be happy to just be playing the sport you love. It's like we're, we're very idealistic that way. Um, if I was a GM, I'd be like, that is why I only sign Swedes. <laughs> yeah, so it's nothing but <laughs> yeah, Swedes now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> look, at, look at some of the best uh, value, value deals in the NHL. You have Klingberg and then you have Raquel and uh, uh, what else? Home, Yarncroft, Garvidsson. Yeah, some, some pretty good players that play for peanuts basically compared to what, uh, you know, comparables. Well, that's how Detroit was able to stretch a dollar as long as they yeah, did, right? exactly, exactly. But and then you have Nylander who his dad was obviously... Uh, Played like almost a thousand NHL Big games. money NHL yeah, he's, player. He's, he's, Get paid, son. Yeah, exactly. So he's not like most of the Swedish players in the NHL are like from humble. I don't know, like not they're from middle class families, I guess. Yeah, most well, of them. Uh, so they would not like require. They see like these dollar signs and they go, "I'll take it, whatever." You know, I don't care if if this is beneath my value and. And but Nylander comes from a different uh, different family, obviously, and yeah. Well, there's a, there's a pedigree thing there. Like yeah, his dad would hold out for money too, did yeah, he not? I, I think he had like a deal with the Oilers and decided. Oh, we offered him all the money. We yeah, backed yeah. the the yeah, Brinks truck out. up to him, and, uh, and you know we'll back that truck up to pretty much anybody. <laughs> 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 Throw a shovel full of cash at this guy here and that guy there. Well, I mean, there's also another component. I mean, William Nylander is not only under pressure from his own camp to to hold out and make sure he gets rewarded properly. I mean, it's also there's also the component of of Austin Matthews and Mitchell Marner getting con- new contracts at some point. He can't take. I mean, he can't just accept any offer the the Leafs will throw at him. Um, and also, I think it's. It has become pretty obvious that maybe they could actually do without him. I mean, the way they've been scoring so far, well, they, they haven't been scoring very well these last two couple of games, but but they've been scoring at a high pace this year. So they could potentially flip him for, for a pretty good D-man. I don't know if that's what's in the making now, but all I know is Kyle Dubas flew to Europe last week. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they actually met in Switzerland or Stockholm. I, I kind of heard both. But um, we should probably see some news in the next couple of days there, I think. I think I understand the situation. I, the, the, there is a rumor that there's potential talk between Toronto and uh, Carolina for a D Nylander swap. Um, Toronto's an interesting situation, even though I despise them. I do pay attention to them. Uh, they've got Matthews, Marner, Nylander. Kasperi Kampanen is playing is taking a step forward and that's what's a lot make that whole uh, uh debate about well do they even need him or not but for from a Nylander's perspective given that situation one of those guys has to go so if Nylander takes a discount mm-hmm. right now to play on this team he could be easily shipped out next year yeah he's and not I, gonna be the right and not get the money that he should have got yeah and so there's no certainty that he stays in the squad if he takes a discount so I get the rationale to hold out for more money, but who he's trying to compare himself with is where I'm just like, I don't get it. Like he should be, 
What, what's the he should be getting um David pa- Pasternak. Well, he, wants, he wants Pasternak money or he wants more than Pasternak he wants money. way more Pasternak and, pa- and he's not Pasternak no but arguably Drysaddle got more than Pasternak money and he uh, doesn't have as good well we have the, we have what's called the Edmonton reverse discount yes <laughs> yes yes but also like you know that uh, Matthews is probably going to get almost Connor money yeah for sure. Yeah. I hope he gets more. I hope yeah. he gets 15. <laughs> if pay he him everything. in Toronto, he's way better. You <laughs> may as well pay him accordingly. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, so if Nylander takes five, that's like, that's not a lot of money compared to what no. Matthews gets. So I think they probably look at that too. And when Marner, from what I hear, like Marner's going to command pretty much what Matthews wants. Oh, so please. They're in please. A, Pay him more, I say. Absolutely. Yeah. Bring that number up. Double you, it. Why 30 not? million for two players. Sure, we'll take it. I'd also like to... Well, I um, well, William Nylander has had two consecutive 60-point seasons um, where he hasn't been getting... Um, he hasn't been getting that much time on the power play compared to some other comparable players. And he was... For for stretches last year, he was on the fourth line for the Leafs. Um, and also, I mean, compared to a guy like Jack Eichel, William Nylander actually had two stronger seasons to start his career or seasons as strong points wise. So, I mean, he should uh, he should come with a pretty hefty price tag, I would say. So I think he's he's actually William Nylander always gets treated a little bit unfairly, I'd say. Uh, his dad had a reputation, stuff like that. Um, I know him pretty well. He's he's a wonderful kid. He's a great kid. He's, I mean, he wouldn't want to hold out. He wants to play hockey, obviously. Uh, but I think he also gets a little bit, he, he gets a little bit more shit than he actually deserves. That's my take on it. Because he is a really good player and put him in the right environment and give him his 19 minutes, uh, he could get 90 points. Nope. I mean, it's it's not just a discussion of who is William Nylander today, but who is William Nylander going to be in five years from now? Because it's essentially a seven, eight year contract we're talking. So maybe we should go Nylander for Russell. Oh, I fell straight up. I fell for a meme. Trade is one to, for one. Yeah. <laughs> I was going well, we're for due a, for a good one. Yeah, we're we're bound to win one of these eventually. Sooner or later. I went to a play, I looked at a meme, it said that they traded Nylander for dry sidle and draft picks. Yeah. And I went, shit. But it said NHL.com staff writer. <laughs> shit. I went in the play and I thought about it and didn't watch the play. And I came out and I went, you know what? That's not a bad deal. And I was about to tweet. And then I thought, oh, Wanye, well, yeah, you always get tricked by the internet. It wasn't a real trade. <laughs> <laughs> that shit happens to me all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yep. I think I like the idea that Nylander, Matthews, and Marner have got like a little tripod going. And the other two that are playing right now are texting them like, hey, man, hold out. Hold out. You're inflating our contract. hundred grand a day, baby. Well, hundred grand a day. that's the other day. thing too, right? It sets values for your other key That's what I'm talking about. I don't know that you can have a team as laden with young talent as Toronto, bring in John Tavares, yeah. throw the vault at him, and not have some of your young talent yeah. have to leave. Too. The minute they signed Tavares, that was uh, the death kiss to one of them. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure. That's when Matthews pulled out the front half of his hair of he- head of hair. <laughs> well, I just loved when uh, Brendan Shanahan says... Oh, in Detroit, we all took hometown discounts to keep the band together. <laughs> and uh, Austin Matthews' response was, well, I'll let my agent talk about that. <laughs> He's more interested in modeling today's trouser than playing good hockey. I'm still rattled by that long red Cody add on in that one picture. You would know who you wouldn't see wearing that? Connor McDavid. Never. Wouldn't catch him dead in that jacket. Connor's got better style. Way better You know style. what I'm sad about, actually, and what this, ha- this, this Halloween party has created is Sean- Connor shaved his beard. Yes, he did. did. He yeah. did. And he's, his head. Wink. <laughs> at first, at first, I was rattled. And he's got jaundice. Yeah, yeah, he looks crazy. Terrible. Jaundice. He gained fifty pounds. What's up with that? Jeez. Connor's got scurvy. Oh no! Somebody was saying on Twitter, like, "Oh no, Connor shaved his head for his Halloween costume." It caught me for a second. Then I was like, "Oh no, bald skin caps are a thing." <laughs> no, and then somebody was like, "Oh, I hope that they tested on his skin to see if he's allergic to the glue you have to wear on those things." Are people even thinking this shit through. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, your girlfriend to Connor McDavid, are you even thinking about the long term implications of the bald cap? I like God. the matching couple. They look nice. Mars you know that was Homer? all her idea. Oh, of course. Two years ago, she made him go as Trump. Before that was like the no, next that was last year. That, that was, was last year. That was last year. That was last oh, that was year two yeah. Years ago. So that's why that's so devastating. That party was Connor gets put on blast for going as Donald Trump. Yeah. For because we didn't know. I, I, swear, I swear it was the year before. No, it was last that year. Was last oh, okay. year. Yeah. I believe you. I believe you. You guys are Oilers Nation. Yeah. And then this year he's gone as Homer. Yeah, he went safe. Lauren again. Yeah. 
He should they go will, as Austin Matthews in that red coat. Oh, oh, oh troll. But I mean, uh, the the most surprising thing to me was when he pretty much went out and said that, well, marijuana is not too bad after all. He, you, have yeah. those comments? you have to look into he, he was uh, He was talking about, uh, I believe, the CBD yeah. oil, which yeah, is yeah. like the non-high getting stuff that's supposed to help with pain and focus. But maybe indirectly talking about <laughs> getting after the... Hey, devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce no longer, my friend. No that's longer right. illegal. Prohibition God's is over. Lettuce. Prohibition is over. It's Justin's lettuce. That's right. That's right. What else do you want to talk about? Bag milk. You got a list of stuff over there. Do you see any of the other costumes? On the oil? Yeah. Oh. Of course. Did I? What see else any you got? Like we talked about the Game of Thrones nerd to me. Like good on Lucic. Like that was. See, I didn't know. Like I haven't watched Game of Thrones, so I didn't know. Oh, that's right. So I'm looking at that's him, like, what my good. beef is with you constantly. Is yeah, that you've not seen. I GOT. haven't either. Don't worry about it. You uh, know what we were doing while everybody was watching Game of Thrones, getting laid. No, no? we were following up on little Tate news. Right, we were. Oh, following up on uh, little speaking of little Tate, what the fuck is happening right know. now? I don't want to talk about it from the Swedish people. Very Holy embarrassing. cow! It's it's cre- it's creeping me out. It's creeping me out too. Like is she like what did she did she did some guy do some things to her? Well, no, she was locked in a closet according to whoever. Yeah, according writing. to the Instagram, yeah. This it is, is like the creep like the one she released today, it was like It's terrible. No, oh, it's terrible. God. Yeah, Wanya and I were DMing. Uh, we don't even want to oh, tell yeah. you who little Tay is. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the first instance of a child star being mistreated. Uh, yeah. First ever. one ever. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's take a break, Dan. Back after this. Alberta is where you find hard working hands. Where prairie-grown rye meets mountain spring water. Where we pull dragons from the ground. And we choose Rig Hand Distillery. Vodka, whiskey, gin, and more. Rig Hand is made from Alberta-grown ingredients, locally distilled and distributed. It's a bottle of Alberta. Ask for award-winning Rig Hand in your liquor store and visit RigHandDistillery.com. We're back. Real Life Podcast brought to you by our good friends at Rig Hand Distillery. Jay, how many Nation Vodkas have you had today? Ten? Uh, today 12? I've had... No, well, I'm still feeling... So I was out with the Swedes taking them to the game where I did enjoy some Nation Vodka and sodas. Delish. So because I had so many then, I didn't have any today. You should have got yourself a double-double, my friend. I'm Yeah, you know what? That'd probably... A little hair of the dog. That's right. I'd bring you right Get back on the... Yeah, right where I need to mix. be. Exactly where you need to be. It's delicious stuff, that double-double. What are you doing now? Now that you've been drink, have you been drinking brum when there's winds? No, I need to go get my brum. I've just been lazy. I haven't gone out to their distillery. I didn't want to say anything, but Dan's in the washroom. Why is he wearing shorts? I don't know what Dan's thing is. I told him to wear pants. What the fuck? So he, Dan Dan has to wear shorts for every game the Oilers are under five hundred. Well, he the, did it for like a year. Yeah, but now they're five hundred. So so uh, he did wear pants. The other he day. did wear pants the other day. I have to be honest; it looked weird. It okay. did look super weird. He felt weird. So he went back to wearing shorts. What the shorts. fuck, are you going to wear shorts the rest of his life in a sub-zero climate? That's his thing. <laughs> it's a pretty funny story. Like, uh, I had a live podcast in uh, in Gothenburg the day before the Oilers played the Devils, and we had, uh, like, Dan as our special Thank guest. Thank you for on. that, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. So uh, he's uh, he's a local celebrity in Sweden now. Is that why he's wearing shorts, you think? Cause he's I being think so. Did you share the story of the shorts with everyone? Yeah, yeah, sure. And everyone, was everyone like, this guy's crazy? No, they were like sharing on him. He was like the center of the party. No one wanted to listen to us anymore after that. They were oh. like, Dan, Dan, Dan. And they just like stand around and point at his legs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's wild. So Dan's he had the legs news are here. big one in day Sweden. I, well, one day I was sitting on the couch, as you do, and I was watching the news. And there's a show about Dan and his shorts. And they like CBC is here, like videoing him walking around in his shorts. <laughs> and it was like minus 30. Yeah, that. I like, remember it was just like steam coming out of all the very yeah. strange, very, very strange. So maybe we could talk a little bit about like the business that brings us together between elite prospects and be- between the nation network. And maybe Jay, just to give our listeners like a little bit of backstory, you know, the work that we're doing with Peter and Ufe, maybe you could just kind of like let everybody know what we do. Well, we met, uh, virtually initially well, actually no Ufe brought all this together when he came and visited yeah. us and then we uh uh you know he I told them the story of what it is we're doing and what our mission is and uh Ufe thought there might be a fit if we had a bigger conversation and then you know next thing you know we're having a Skype call with Peter and Ufe and we're we're talking about how we can work together so uh for those of you who don't know which I'll be surprised if you don't Elite Prospects is a giant player database you know with uh all the information from every league you could think of under the sun uh, on the site and also advanced information like um, salary cap and uh, like a lot of the other like deeper kind of uh, 
like minor hockey stats and all that stuff. So Scouting it's kind of like a one-stop shop. There. Pardon me? Scouting reports in there too. Scouting reports in there. And they just all launched a premium version of it. But, you know, we, uh, we realized quickly that we live in Canada and North America and they live in Sweden and they want help in North America and we want to work with Swedish people. So quickly we found that there was an opportunity where we can help kind of be some boots on the ground and help them initially on a monetization front. Uh, and help them with their North American side on the ad sales side. on the ad sales yeah. side because they have a mandate. Which the most the most mind blowing thing to me about Elite Prospects was it's this giant busy site that's got all this hockey data, and they're bigger in Europe than they are in North America at the time, yep. which was just mind blowing. So obviously there's there's a huge opportunity. So all of a sudden now it's like, well, how can we kind of get ingrained together? So there's the monetization front. And then there's also a little bit of like we did some content partnership stuff for World Juniors. You know, we reference elite prospects in our content as well. You guys reference NHL numbers. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and daily face off. And daily. Face-off. So we're just creating all these bridges together and trying to see, you know, because there's a lot of, you know, opportunities. And, and, and as we discussed, even today, we had a great meeting leading up to this about new opportunities, new initiatives that they're bringing to the forefront. And I'll let kind of Peter talk to that where there's more ways to work together. So of uh, having said that big kind of long rant. Maybe, Peter, you could just tell our listeners a little bit about the history of Elite Prospects and how it came together. I think it's really cool. There's a Swedish publicly traded company that's basically like the nation, but our Swedish cousins. Yeah, well, we're um, Elite Prospects is owned by Eversport Media Group. So we're a publicly listed uh, sports publisher in Sweden. Uh, it wasn't always like that for Elite Prospects. Uh, but the guy who founded Elite Prospects back in 1999, he still works for us. He's still the database manager and the, he's still running Elite Prospects the way he did 20 years ago when he built the website. Um, uh, at first, it was just like a news website. He was writing in English about Swedish prospects, basically. Um, he's one of those, uh, he was one of the first real internet hockey nerds. Awesome. Uh, and so, uh, after a while he wanted to get like, uh, like player profiles and bios and stuff on players. So he started gathering that and it just kind of snowballed. Um, and so all of a sudden you wanted more than just prospects in there. So he started adding like current NHL players, getting all their uh, career bios. And then they started adding old players and dead players and uh, young players and beer league players. And all of a sudden we ended up with this monster of 623,000 players in our database. So. 623,000. And so the yep. founder then of the site, he sold it to the larger media company? Yeah. He uh, like um, probably eight or nine years ago, he, he needed some, he needed some more resources for development and he wanted some went to handle the monetization, selling advertisement and, and getting it on a bigger platform and helping him with promotion and stuff like that. So, so it was incorporated into our company maybe 10 years ago. And, and now it's, uh, we're getting close to 1 million unique users a week. Phenomenal. So it's insane. So it's awesome. become, it's, um, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Um, a couple of years ago, Nikolai Ehlers mom actually sent us an email and she was like, Hey, um, I'm the mother of Nikolai Ehlers. Um, uh, can you uh, um, correct his birth date? Because uh, he was actually born on February 14. You have February 13 in there. And since you get it wrong, all the others get it wrong. So the NHL got the wrong birth date of Nikolai Ehlers because it was uh, one day off in our database. So it's... Uh, the it's, true um, leaders. Yeah, it's great. We, we've, been, we've been thinking about actually sometimes just shutting the site down for a few minutes, like for Stanley Cup Finals or World Juniors, just to, see what happens. Just to sit up there in the press box and see a mayhem break out. <laughs> so it's, no, it's great. It's, it's, uh, it's um, humbling to know that we have um, hundreds of thousands of people visiting our website every day. To, we're essentially looking to become the IMDB of hockey, and we're, we're getting close to that point now. And we have tons of new uh, things. We launched our premium version uh this summer uh that's going to keep improving a lot over over the next couple of months and we have our content website coming out in just a few weeks um, and what's actually. that going to be called it's going to be uh, elite prospects rinkside so rinkside. it's going to be uh, a news feature video podcast all kinds of content related to prospects it's going to be major junior college nhl ahl prospects and also european prospects so we want to get the best stories the best rankings the best like draft analysis uh we we've been mostly well stats only up until now pretty much but we have a strong group of of writers and freelancers so we're gonna we're gonna take it up a notch and make sure that we provide a number of really good read prospects related reads every day to our 
ever-growing North American and global audience. Phenomenal. It's and, and, and like just bolting that onto already this existing site is going to be amazing because like I know for me, anytime I go to Elite Prospects, like I just fall down the the, the rabbit hole. Oh, it's so easy. Oh god, like it's, right now I'm on it right now, and I've already clicked on ten pages because I clicked on one player. Peter and Ufer just like, of course you are, you idiot. This <laughs> yeah. is designed to get money out from people like. Yeah, you. we need to learn how to impose this on our sites. I'd love to get our thanks page to Elite Prospects. Out. I know that today is former Oiler Miro Shatan's birthday. Unbelievable! Yep. Happy sixty third birthday, Miro. exactly. Yeah, well, you can't see that now, but I'm doing my best uh, Simpsons, Mr. Burns impression right here, just rubbing my <laughs> yeah, hands. Exactly. In. <laughs> exactly. And Bag Milk, you were saying at the break, you're super pissed at these guys because they took your favorite feature and put it behind a paywall. One oh. of the best things about Elite Prospects is going to get the pronunciation of names that I do not know how to pronounce. But, Wanye, I learned during the break, I just need to sign up with my email. Then I'll get my, my toy back. Oh. I don't know how many times during World Juniors, like if Canada's playing Sweden or Russia or whatever, the way we pronounce European names is so backwards and butchered. Oh, I God. love EP's name tool. It's so good. Yeah, well, it works the other way around too. Like there are some, like, especially the French Canadian names. We get a lot of, you know, French Canadian hockey players come play in Sweden and you got like... Uh, some of these names, like Sean Pierre Lecou, did you say? It's like not that easy for us either. So it it actually works to to make the world a better place on both ends. I'd say. I always think when it comes to this kind of stuff about Gee Bear, remember that guy? Yeah, yeah. And he was an American. Yeah. And yeah. It was Guy Hebert. Yeah. And then the minute he got into hockey, everyone assumed he was French, and all the Hebert family were like, "Now who the fuck do these people think they are calling us <laughs> Gee Bear? We were born Heberts. We'll die Heberts. Thank you very much." Well, bag milk. You just give them your email address: bagmilk at outlook.net. That's right. And then you're in at lycos.ca. That's right. <laughs> at geocities.org. And then I could find out how to pronounce Ukapekalukanen again. On um, who? Ukapekalukanen. What, what's an Ukapekalukanen? A uh, goalie prospect. He's my favorite name on EP. Ah. Uh, Ukapekalukanen. Who's that? I hate, uh, it drives me nuts. I think he's a flame. Isn't it like a Yanni Koki Paka? Uh, Yoki Paka. Yoki, Yoki Paka. Yoki Paka. Now, is he a finish? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a finish name. Super finish. See, like if we had EP's voice tool, we would have known that we were pronouncing Jesse Pugliarvi wrong forever. We were? Oh, yeah. What it's is a, it? It's a soft J. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. yes sir. Of course. See? Yeah, there's no hard Js. You need this. Well, we'll, 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 we'll call him Pugliarvi, but then call him Jesse. We'll, yes. we'll, we'll do all the Js in his last name perfectly and then still call but him Jesse. What is like the decorum on something like this? Like if he comes to Canada and we're from the land of hard Js and now legal Js. <laughs> well done. Can't Boom. we call him Jesse and not have him be? Yeah, an, I, I, and I think that's what or happens. Or is it rude? Do you want to be pronounced? I, like I want to be tongue? respectful. Yay? Yeah, yay. yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's actually born in Sweden. Yeah, we're trying. As we to, learned on we're trying Radio. to steal him, but just claim him. Well, you're not sure if you want him yet or not. It's just like we're you not sure. No, I love Jesse. Jesse. And so, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, say. yes, say pour les RV. Eh? Hey, see, it's amazing. You can be one of our readers. See, I'm trying. I'm, well, the the other thing, and I, I got to get you to comment. So we, I'll bring it back to the the Yol Pearson. Correct. So the same team we play for the same team as uh, uh Eli- is, it, is it El- Elias how do you- Elias Elias Peterson 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 yeah interesting see and so a former oiler Liam Redox ah, ah nice the red rocket ah the ginger ninja the ginger ninja so the town that they live uh, that they play in is, is that the town yeah it's it's spelled f a x j o so Vax Joe, as, as a Canadian, sure. would look at that. Of course. And, and their team name is the Lakers. Now, I need you guys to pronounce what that actually... V-A-X-J-O. Vecre. Exactly what you said. Nope. Exactly. I don't believe Phonetically it. Phonetically <laughs> perfect. Nope, this is a lie. Like, we're bringing Swedish women to the country next time, Wanye. I don't believe that that's how I just it's I, I love. I love how this it's... This is a trick. I, 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 lo- I love trick. it. I, that's that what, was, the world's such an amazing place, because you can sit... Like, I'm, 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 I'm at lo- uh, having lunch with 24 Swedes... And I'm just listening to them all talk, and I'm like, this is just insane. Like, just the rapid fire, like, well, to me, it sounds like gibberish, but like, you know, the, but they're, they, they're they talking so fast in this like foreign thing. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It always blows my mind when little kids don't speak English. So I'm like, now how in the hell did that three-year-old learn to speak German? But of course, for him, it's just what they speak at home, right? But for me, I'm like, wow, good for you, son. 
you've like single handedly moved the needle on international tourism in Edmonton. I hope you recognize that like yeah. 20 years from now, explore Edmonton and Edmonton tourism and be sitting down like, remember in 2018 when all the Swedes came? What the hell happened that year? We got to try and redo that again. Yeah, this I year. actually think Global News wanted to get a hold of me or to uh, do something. They're just going to have like a stick and they're like, are you really from somewhere else? <laughs> well, it's, it's so funny because mm. like I, I tell people that I'm like, I'm, cause I'm, I'm calling ahead, right? Yeah. To like, like, hey, we're going to go for lunch here. Do sure. that. I'm like, hey, like, I'm I'm going to bring 24 Swedes to your restaurant. Quick interjection. Whatever. Have you taken them by the noodle? Oh, no, we're going there for lunch. Good on. Go yeah, on. Don't worry. Go, don't go, worry. Go, don't yeah, worry. Good, good, good. Got to get that Swedish demo. Yeah, yeah. They're going to try noodle noodle for good, sure. Good. And they're all they're, they're all like, what? This is crazy. And like, they're just tripping over themselves. Like, you're bringing help us out. foreign tourists. Oh, yeah. And they're hooking us up. Yeah. Everywhere we've gone, we've been hooked up. Mm-hmm. It's been great. That's actually going to be one of the things we're going to be introducing at Elite Prospects at some point next year. We're going to try and put together um, even more hockey trips to mm-hmm. places like Edmonton. But we're also looking at putting together hockey trips to uh, places in Europe uh, and Sweden for potentially Canadians and Americans wanting to go and um, experience the Swedish atmosphere mm-hmm. at arenas, which is way louder, way more intense. We don't get 20,000 people to our games. We get somewhere between like five and nine thousand but they all stand up and sing and chant and go on for the length of the game so it's a totally different in arena atmosphere and there will be girls there of course so uh so I'm they say <laughs> so yeah. they say and then you're gonna get to the game you'll have flown all the way over there and you'll be sitting down like all right Ufe, where's the girls at oh yeah they can't all come tonight because it's a holiday <laughs> and it's national girls stay at home day and all the women stay home and all the men go to the hockey game so you, you got me twice Bodie twice you got me with no real women i'm curious you mentioned the atmosphere in the swedish games is better yeah you were at roger's place the other night what are we missing because we talk about atmosphere a lot on this podcast what is roger's place missing well, it's not just, I mean, it's not Rogers place, uh, alone. I mean, most arenas in the NHL are very quiet compared to, to what it, what we get over in Sweden. Uh, I mean, the experience of going to an NHL game is obviously still awesome. I mean, it's, it's so great. I, um, my favorite place is Nashville. I think Nashville and Vegas right now are probably the best two arenas you can go to because they get really loud. And obviously people are drunk and people are, it's, it's, it's a good party atmosphere. Uh, I imagine Rogers place being a great place when the Oilers score and when they play great, you know, Nashville predators, they can come in, they can come in and shut down pretty much any well, that's building. that's kind of rude, I suppose. <laughs> well, they haven't seen a goal yet. I totally forgot about that. They went to an Oilers game and they didn't see a goal. But as far as what you're, uh, it's not that you're actually missing something is just a different, totally different culture. Like, um, um, standing up and singing and chanting and doing stuff for the length of the game. It's actually, it actually started, I think in British football. And it was just something that we would do in Sweden back in the sixties and seventies. And it's just, it's just a different culture. You, you go to the game and you get loud and, and, and it's just a little bit, it's just a different culture. I went to a game with a friend of mine in uh, Norway, and I know it's not the same country, but globally, it's similar. And I was blown away by all the little idiosyncrasies. Like, here, you can have a crepe with jam on it. Oh, delicious. Oh, the top scorer's got a gold helmet. And I'm walking with my friend. I'm like, this is really weird culture shock for me. And we walked around a corner, and there was a framed Oilers jersey of Gretzky stuck to the wall because he'd been to that arena once. And I'm like, this is really weird culture shock. Giant Gretzky jersey, just keep walking. Yeah, the, n- now that I came here and was really rude, uh, I you really got to say that everything is better in the NHL except for the noise that isn't there when play is underway. But but then again, you don't have the golden helmets. You don't have uh, 18 advertisement spots on your jerseys or in the face-off circles. You can take and- all those ads off the jerseys if you sold beer. Yeah. I cannot for sure. fathom the fact that it is a sober October all season long at Swedish Elite Games. I yeah. love well, that. Well, it's, it's not it's not sober by any means. It's just that people can't bring their beers into their stands. Like they they start drinking probably eight or nine hours before the game. Uh, and yeah. so it's not it's it's not they're not getting uh breathalyzed <laughs> by any means. It's just they can't bring it 
into the stands, which is so they go outside and they fight instead. Oh, it's also part of Swedish fan culture, the fighting and we won't let them drink beer. Yeah. And, no beer. Why? I don't know. Just keep things civil. How's everything going? Great. Everyone's fighting outside. The yeah, building. we got 280 <laughs> police officers. here. There are actually there's actually more police officers around a Swedish elite league game with 5000 uh, in the crowds than you get here. I, I saw like three cops and maybe one security guard asleep on a chair. It's pretty tame. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh um, oh, we're soft but but then again i mean it's it's just something it's just different it's very hard it's just so hard to explain and and that's why i think we took jay to a your garden game a, a, a pretty okay uh crowd that night but it, it can get even better than that so um and i was blown away and if that was an off night I and i also should- out of out of respect into the culture i was i was told what to do and later that evening i saw three aik fans that I kicked the shit out of. Nice. Yeah. Sober. That's right. Yeah. It's fuck Stone AIK. Yeah. Your garden for life. Fuck those guys. We like those guys embracing our fan culture. That's, right. That's great. But having that said, uh, maybe next year, a bunch of you Oilers fans listening to this show right now, maybe you'd be interested in coming to Stockholm and have some beers, uh, meet some women and watch some hockey. And we would be more than hop- happy, more than happy to help you guys do that. I think this is important. I think it is too. And this is like, once again, like these are the things we, when we get together, we have these amazing conversations and talk about that, about how we can bridge, not not, not necessarily content together, but people together. Like there's 24 Swedes in Edmonton. Like how fucking cool. Unbelievable. Is that? Like that's so cool. And like, and, and it's Edmontonians are shocked by it. Cause they're like, cause we're still like that, like little city that could in the sense of like, well, why would 24 people from Sweden want to come here where they go everywhere else? So it's kind of cool. Like that for me, I feel passionate. International about tourism, I think, is like super important for a city's development, right? Because the minute you know, you guys are on Jasper Avenue, one of our main strips. If you had two thousand people on that street on a weekend that weren't from Edmonton, singing the praises of Edmonton, it makes Edmontonians feel that brings their, their morale up, makes them feel more prideful of where they're from. When you're in a place that's maybe a little bit more backwater and doesn't see a lot of tourism, people are like suspicious of outsiders. Like, hey what the hell are you doing here on Jasper Avenue, you Swede, right? And we're trying to like get over that tipping oh, point where it's not like, who did you have to knock up to be forced to come to Edmonton? It, it is funny because everyone, when we, like, because I'm keeping eyes, right? Because we're walking as a big posse, right? Yeah. We're 24 people sure. walking down the street. I'm watching it. Every, everyone can tell they're not from here. Yeah. A, because their style is impeccable. Impeccable. Gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. But uh, yeah, it's Even funny. the eight-year-old. Even the eight-year-old. His oh, beard is so trim. <laughs> well manicured. Yes. <laughs> Whenever I, Ufe, I remember last time you were here and I was like looking at your very well manicured and kept beard. And I was looking at myself afterwards <laughs> and I was like, I couldn't go head to head with Ufe for a chick. What am I talking about? This beard game's on blast. Well, I'll tell you this, boys. You got to come back. We will definitely come over there. Jay went last time and hogged all the fun. I was in Iceland, so I didn't get to come and, and have the meeting, but we will be back. And I think building the bridge w- between our two businesses is, is really important for a lot of reasons. But I also think like we have more in common with you guys than we do with people just down the road here in Edmonton, right? Like you said earlier, the hockey internet nerd community of yeah. people who've actually made it work, like 80% of them are in this room right now. <laughs> so I thank you guys for coming to Edmonton. I thank you for staying at Crash Hotel. I thank you for l- going to the Oilers game games and the oil king game bringing your countrymen here and know that we really appreciate you coming here we love that you came to edmonton and we can't say enough good stuff about yeah you. well and also we just got out of our jet lag we got two more games to go so uh, all of you uh fans um hang out at the pint for the next couple of days good and we'll plug. show you uh well we're known for our women as you have uh, mentioned several times just a but couple. but we're also <laughs> fairly known for being able to to hold our beer so um there's going to be uh numerous parties at the pint over oh. the next couple Oh, shit. And you guys got to go to a practice or something. Is that right, Jay? Yeah. That's sweet, too. Yeah. Pre-game skate tomorrow. You snuck these guys into pre-game skate? Who well, do they think we the are? The clout of Ufe Bodin of got course. us in. You've got uh, more swag in this town than we do. <laughs> yeah. Respect. Well done. We'll call Ufe. He'll know how to get exactly. shit done. All right, boys. This has been a good show. Thank you very much, everybody. Hey, Real so Life Podcast. Cheers. See you next week.